All right, guys, um, we're going to do example four from chapter 16.2. Um, so example four says evaluate the uh, line integral uh, y squared dx plus x dy, where the curve C is uh, two segments. C1 is a line segment from negative five to neg uh, negative five, negative three to z zero two. And uh, curve two is the arc of a parabola x equals 4 minus y squared from negative 5, negative 3 to 0, 2. Um, the first thing, for the first part of the curve, we have a line segment. So we need to remember um, the uh, function to uh, define that line segment as a vector. And it looked like this. It's in my important notes page. Uh, 1 minus t r naught plus t r1 and t is the parameter and it goes from 0 to 1. So we're going to uh, quickly define x and y using that. Um, so in this case we're going to have um, 1 minus t times x naught which in this case x naught is negative uh, 5 plus t times x1 which is 0 and so in this case x of t is equal to um, 5t minus 5 Another way we could have thought of this is uh, the change in uh, x was a change of 5, and that goes to t, and the initial value of x was negative 5, so that goes there. Um, that's another way we talked about this uh, way back in chapter something or another. Um, y of t is going to be equal to 1 minus t times negative 3 plus t times 2 and when we simplify that we're going to get y of t is equal to let's see that'll be negative 2 positive 3 uh, so we'll have 5t uh, minus 3 in this case okay so those are our uh, parametric uh, equations for the curve and the uh, the actual integral we want is going to be the sum of the two integrals so we're going to start with curve one y squared dx plus x dy that was the function we were given um, and so in this case we're going to replace this with the integral from 0 to 1, we're going to put everything in terms of t. So y squared was 5t minus 3. Squared. And then we need dx. So in this case, dx is equal to 5dt. So 5dt. And plus x, x was 5t minus 5, um, and we're going to uh, take the derivative of y, so we'll have dy equals 5dt as well. And uh, we can go ahead and simplify that. Now everything's in terms of uh, dt. And uh, it's getting late here, so I'm going to skip some steps. Um, this can be simplified as 5 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 25t squared minus 25t plus 4dt. And then that's just a polynomial, so we can take the integral of that relatively easily, and we'll get negative. 5, 6. 
Um, and that's just the value for the uh, first part of the curve. So now we need to go over the parabola. So this is just part of our value. Um, we also need the integral across C2. Um, and in this case, um, C2 was a parabola that was given as x equals 4 minus y squared. And in this case, the easiest way to define this parametrically is to say that uh, y is the parameter, and we're just going to allow y to vary from what they told us. So in this case, they told us that y is going to be going from um, negative 3 to 2. And we got that from, uh, from here, y is going from negative 3 to 2. So there we are. So we're going to use that. Um, we'll have uh, dx is equal to uh, negative 2 um, y dy. And um, our dy is just dy. Uh, so when we set up our integral, for curve 2 of y squared dx plus x dy, we're going to get that it's the integral with respect to y from negative 3 to 2 of y squared, and then we need dx, and dx was just negative 2y. Um, and then we're going to have, uh, sorry, dy, dy. And then we're going to write our other part. So we've got x, which is 4 minus y squared. Got that from here. Um, dy. Now everything's in terms of dy. And we can integrate from negative 2 to, t or negative 3 to 2. Simplifying the expression, we're going to have the integral from negative 3 to 2 of negative 2y cubed minus y squared plus 4 dy. And when we integrate that, it's a polynomial again, so not too bad. Um, we're going to get 40 and 5 6. All right, so that, um, if we're looking, we went from the, uh, the same point to the same point. So really what we did was we went from here to here in a straight line and integrated our function along that line. And then we also integrated the function along a curve that looked like that. And we got two different values. So if this function represented a force, um, this would be a non-conservative force because we can see that uh, it was path dependent. It depended on uh, how we went from the two points. Um, another interesting thing to note is that if we actually were to have reversed the direction, so say we went from that uh, in that direction, um, we would have gotten the negative of all of our results. Um, and we can see that's one of the uh, important notes on this page here. Um, if we change the direction of the path, we get the, uh, the opposite of the result we would have gotten from before.